Let's take a look at the multipliers and finish colors in the parts list for a given manufacturer. So assuming you already have the V15 program open, you've selected your catalog and a job, now you have the menu tree on the left and we can click parts list from here. Now this will open up this window and I like to make this a little bigger sometimes uh, just so you can see more information. So. Now, every catalog in the V15 program can, can have up to uh, 10 finish colors for a given part number. And most manufacturers only use about five of those, but um, there are some exceptions. But uh, you'll notice there's the part numbers, the description, the third column is the multiplier column. Uh, sometimes there's a catalog code, a catalog page, and then you, you'll always have stock length for some of the parts and a part type. And that's helpful for uh, trying to filter down the list to different types of parts. All these different uh, fields or columns right here will help do that. So uh, first notice the edit finish names button here at the top. Now that's if you want to change the name of a color on one of these columns. So the manufacturer catalog actually comes with the colors and pricing already pre-assigned. But if for some reason you didn't like the way it was worded, you could always change it yourself and then it, it will be uh, more to your liking. And you'll notice also uh, if there's nothing for a finish then it will say no finish because uh, there's no pricing for that. So you could always add pricing for a whole separate color if you want but keep in mind like this US aluminum catalog has 3377 parts so it's a fair amount of parts. Um, but that is the capability. There's 10 possible colors. The names can be changed just by clicking edit finish names and um, and that's how that works. So one part number can have all those different prices for the different colors. And um, so let's talk more about the multiplier. Uh, these prices here are actually list prices. So they're not discounted at all. That's their published list price from the manufacturer. And each uh, glazing contractor will get a specific discount multiplier from the manufacturer for either their entire catalog or sometimes there's different multipliers for different types of parts. So what, what you need to know how to do is change the multipliers because typically they'll always be one. And um, if you're getting a discount, you need to have it something like 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, uh, anything that's um, less than one because uh, you're multiplying that value times the list price and the answer is your net price. So uh, a 30 percent discount is actually a 0.7 multiplier and when you multiply it out you you would see that reflected in the price. So one of the things that's helpful is this filter bar at the top and what we do like let's say I want all the AP part numbers anything that begins with an AP to have a specific multiplier so I can type in AP at the top here and it's filtering my list to only AP parts and you'll notice there's only 136 of those parts. Now now that I've limited this list to that group of parts I can hit change group of parts and I can put in my new multiplier let's say it's 0.55 and then I can hit update and notice how everything in this list these 136 parts are have been updated to 0.55 multiplier. Now to get back to our complete list we hit clear filter and now we can see a mixture. There's some 1's and some 0.55's. Now let's say all stock length parts need to be a specific multiplier. I can type the word stock or just ST for that matter under part type. Another way to do it is any stock length is going to have a value in this uh, stock length column. The difference is there might be some stock lengths that are like 100 and 44 in this case. There's a couple 144 or a few 144s, a couple 172s. Um, now when we use the stock sort right here, that's actually getting all the 252s, 288s. It doesn't matter what the stock length is, it's just based on the type of part. So that's probably what I would use if the catalog is set up that way. Um, so now we can hit change group of parts. I can put in my multiplier, let's say 0.5 and hit update. So now all my stock lengths are 0.5 and then you remember before we made all the AP parts um, 0.55. So we can keep going like that. We can actually say if it's a certain page of the catalog. Um, let's, let's see if anything's on 07. So yeah, anything on 07. And you might be over 
changing something you've already changed, but it doesn't matter because uh, if you need to work with a specific group of parts, you can narrow it down even more like that. Now if you want to do page 07 and then narrow it down to the E1, then just keep typing and it would be E1. And that would be all these parts might get us. So use this filter bar. You can combine, uh, and if I only want the miscellaneous parts on that page, I've got my page code here and the M for miscellaneous. Now I filter it down even more to that. Um, catalog code is another thing. So if I wanted all the B1 catalog code, there's only one of them. Let's see what else we got. So you can actually just page through the list a little bit and kind of see what the different codes are. And it looks like this one is all Bs. <laughs> so it depends on the catalog and how it was configured. But um, the page number thing or the, the catalog pa page code is helpful. Sometimes there's actually a part type for door. So that's helpful too. Let's say the doors need to get a specific multiplier. Uh, let's say that's a point, uh, you know, five two. Then I can hit update on that. Now, now I can go back to clear filter. And let's say there may be some door frames. That would be DR. Uh, maybe it would just be frame. No. Let's see. Go back to clear filter. So you can kind of play with this. And the door frames might have actually had a door code. So I didn't pay attention to that. But uh, the, the concept is the part type can be used to filter the list. As long as you have the list of parts filtered um, the way you want them, when you hit change the group of parts, it's only affecting that filtered list so it's not doing the whole entire if you don't filter anything and you just hit change the group of parts right here it's going to change the entire catalog so in most cases you don't want that to happen you want it to be specific parts or specific groups of parts and that's what the filter bar helps you do and that's pretty much it for this uh, parts list stuff